This happened about two years ago around Christmas time when I was 11, and I was still getting used to the new house we were living in. It was storming that night, a rare thing to happen around where I live, and it didn't bother me one bit. It would always storm where I used to live. It was around midnight and I was lying in my full-size bed, on top of the covers, and I was staring at my ceiling. To the right of me was my entertainment area, to the left a bookshelf. I had two large windows next to each other behind me, and a vanity in front. On the left of the vanity was a door. The door to the hallway was open, and the room across from mine was my mom's sewing room. The window faced me. I listened to the rain hit my window. I remember feeling a warmth and joy. But suddenly, I felt cold, and a strange urge to look up. So I did. I put on my glasses that were next to me and I propped myself up on my elbows. I could see a tall, male-shaped figure walking down the hall. He was wispy like smoke, and dark. Really, really dark. His long arms moved imply as he walked slowly in long strides. When he was perfectly in line with my doorway, he turned and just stayed there, watching me with his dark red eyes. I couldn't breathe or move. I wasn't scared, but I had no control over my body. Lightning struck, and he seemed to absorb the light that came from the window behind him. My body was forced to lie back down. Then I felt normal again. I sat up quickly and he was gone. I got up quickly and searched my house. No one was awake. Officially freaked out of my 11-year-old mind, I attempted to go back to sleep hiding myself with blankets and pillows. I couldn't sleep that night, and I kept hearing a deep, raspy male voice call my name. It called it quietly, but it seemed to echo around my room. Even now I still see a shadow like him in the corners of my room, but it doesn't scare me as much as it did then. It seems like he wants something, but I just don't know anymore. I was born and raised in America, however my parents were born and raised in Indonesia. Every year my family and I go to Sumatra during the summer. My paranormal experience happened during my first visit. I was six years old at the time which made my experience even more horrifying to me. It was late at night and there was a really bad thunderstorm. My cousin, who was four at the time, and I couldn't sleep, so we just stayed up playing with Barbies. While we were playing around, the lights went out. So we thought we had a normal blackout. My cousin and I got really scared and hid behind the couches. After ten minutes, we heard the kitchen door slam shut. This was weird since the kitchen was outside at the time, so we always kept the door closed. I just thought maybe the strong winds opened the door and slammed it shut, but this wasn't the case. My aunt usually spent most of her time in the kitchen, so I silently hoped that it was just her coming out of the kitchen. But it wasn't. Then we heard chains being dragged on the floor. And the sound of someone moaning. My cousin tugged my shirt and said, Ghost. Her eyes were wide with fear and tears started to roll down her cheeks. I put my hand over her mouth and tried to hold back her tears. I peeked over the couch, and there was a woman with long black hair, and she was wearing a white dress. There were chains tied to her ankles, and she dragged her feet. I looked at her with wide eyes and gasped. Apparently she heard me too, because she turned her head towards me and glared. Then she slowly smiled and started chuckling. The way she turned her head made it seem like her neck was broken. Then I ducked behind the couch and started screaming my head off. My cousin and I were holding on to each other and rocking back and forth. My cousin told me to get rid of her, but of course I couldn't. Then the lights went back on, and the woman disappeared. Our parents ran out of their rooms to see what was wrong, and when we told them what had happened, 
They didn't believe us. Ever since that night, my cousin and I slept in our parents' beds. I was awoken by the storm that night. The thunder was so loud and lightning so bright. I got up to get some water and came back to bed. While covering myself, I realized the hallway light was on. I was getting out of bed to turn it off when I saw that it turned off by itself. I got scared but thought the lights just went out because of the storm. I got back into bed covering myself. I heard my closet door open. So I looked at my closet, seeing something white like a shadow come out of it and walking to the end of my bed. Watching it, it was going around my bed and then back into my closet. I got scared and went into my brother's room and the same thing happened, except I didn't pay attention to it to try to not be afraid. The next morning my mother was cleaning. Something had moved the broom and mop. She didn't realize it because she thought it was just her misplacing it. But after she realized what was happening, she got scared. My mom wanted to move, but I didn't let her. We're still living in the house, but we are planning to move. There's too many unexplainable activities, and we just can't stand it anymore. We're very scared. My nephew plays with the white shadow, thinking it's his friend. I'm thinking it isn't dangerous, but my mom says that it is. That's why we're moving and leaving this place. Ever since then, things are still scary in my house. Things play with my mom, my nephew, and myself. I thought I would have gotten used to it, but I haven't. And I'm still scared of it. This happened when I was about 14 and a half. I was staying at my grandmother's house while my parents were on holiday. It was November 2009, and in the south of England, the weather is normally very wet and cold, with lots of storms. A couple of months earlier I had been in my grandmother's kitchen and faced the back garden. It had been raining very hard. It was just starting to slowly stop, and it was about half past five in the evening. I was cooking dinner for my grandmother as it was my turn and I had been staying around for a couple of days. I looked out of the window to see if the rain had stopped, and this black figure of a man about six feet tall walked by. It had its collar up on the raincoat that it was wearing, and I couldn't see its face at all. It was just a black figure. I stood frozen in the kitchen, scared. It then went out of view and I ran to tell my grandmother about it. She said that she had many experiences of it and had named it Henry. I was a little shocked about this fact, but I got up the courage to continue cooking. That was my very first encounter. Back to that night. I was up in my uncle's bedroom, which was in the attic. The actual attic was separated into two parts with a mini hallway in between. One room for a bedroom and the other as an actual attic. Neither had doors on. It was a very stormy night with high winds and heavy rain. This was about half past ten at night. I heard footsteps up the stairs, and thinking it was my grandmother checking up on me, I shouted, Nan? There was no answer, and this black figure appeared in the doorway, and it looked exactly like Henry, but I wasn't sure. I then screamed, Nan, as I was very scared. And it vanished. But I heard footsteps going down the stairs. My grandmother then came into the room wearing a white nightgown. I asked my friend down the road if he had experienced anything like it that night. And he had. But with one difference. He had a door. And before the figure appeared, the door opened. And after it disappeared, the door closed. Has anyone got any ideas if it was Henry or another ghost? And why does it only appear during very rainy weather or storms? When I was younger, back in the mid-70s, my husband and I lived in an apartment complex. We were fairly well acquainted with the couple who lived above us. 
They were an attractive couple, but their relationship had been a volatile one to say the least. They fought constantly over any and everything, and from time to time, they had even been known to take shots at each other with a snub-nosed 38 pistol the man owned. One night, what I'd feared for months happened. They got into one of their heated arguments, but this time it ended when the woman shot the man to death with his own gun. The man fell to his death on my porch, right in front of my front door. No charges were brought against her, and the woman pleaded self-defense. Less than a week after the man's death, she began to behave irrationally. She became jittery, and claimed to have seen the man in her bedroom on more than a few occasions. Once, she'd even said she saw him climbing up the wall outside her bedroom window. Less than two months later, the woman packed up and moved hastily out of the apartment, and no one ever saw her again. Then one night, about six months after the man had gotten killed, my husband and I were entertaining friends. Among them had been my husband's uncle who'd been legally blind since his early teens. It was late summer, and as will happen in summer, a fierce thunderstorm struck with plenty of lightning, high winds, and blowing rain. The storm lasted all of 20 minutes. However, the festive mood left with the storm and everyone prepared to leave for home. My husband and I walked to the door with our guests. I was the first to reach the door, only to find that something was blocking the screen door, but I couldn't see anything that could have been responsible for it. After pushing hard a few times, the door finally opened, and I stepped out onto the rain-drenched porch, and I saw that something was wrong. Even though the entire porch was soaked, the spot in front of my door was bone dry, and what was even more eerie, it was the fact that the dry spot was in the shape of a human being, from the shape of the head down to the feet, and it was lying in the exact position my neighbor had fallen when his wife shot him. No one wanted to believe it, even though several people witnessed this weird sight. To validate it for himself, my husband's uncle leaned down and felt along the dry spot with his hand, and it left him speechless. We moved out of our apartment several months later, but, until we did, occurrences that could not be explained happened in the apartment. I knew it was my neighbor. He wasn't ready to go, and until this day, I believe that he still haunts that particular apartment.